Okay, so for this video, we're going to fine-tune Bark. So what you're going to do is just open up VS Code or whatever your editor is. And personally, I just, um, the data set from last step, I just copied the folder over here into this data sets folder to make it all in one place and easier to find. And so the first thing we want to do is train the semantic model. And so you just run imports. And then um, here's your training args. So you just the batch sizes, grading, accumulation. This is where you give the checkpoint to your semantic model. Don't change this one because we're training the text model. And so this is where you give the path to your data set, path to your logs, which you want to log with. It can be WandDB, TensorBoard, whatever. And so this is the path to the Hubert model and the Hubert tokenizer model, which is the wave two vec. And this is where you define where you want the saved model and the checkpoints to be stored. And so this is how many steps to take in between each checkpoint. This is what precision you want to use, um, maybe BF16 or FP16. And so these are how many bits to use. It can be 16, 4, or 8. And um, compute D type, which you would want to change this with whatever you're setting here. So if your make precision is BF16, it should be B float 16. And if it's FP16, it should just be float 16. And OK, so or torch to half. So this double quant and quant type in the four bit, that's all, um, it's a work in progress currently, so it doesn't really work. So stick with eight bit or 16 bit and you can ignore these. And so this is for LoRa. So LoRa dim, LoRa scaling, LoRa dropout, and the LoRa module name. Um, you're probably not gonna wanna really change any of this. I mean, other than the dim scaling and dropout, and uh, optimized lower params only means um, it's only going to train the lower, la lower layers. And so learning rate, scale learning rate, use 8-bit atom. This is all pretty self-explanatory. So you just run that to define everything. And then here's where we define um, functions to help with the training and loading the model and setting up the data set and all that stuff. You just run that. And so here's where we set up the actual data set files. So you only have to run this once. And um, this is where you define the max duration in seconds that you want for uh, a file to be allowed to actually be in the data set that's training the model. And so this will load up Huber and load up um, codec. And what it's going to do is it's going to take each wave file. It's going to get the semantic tokens. And then it's going to get the codes. And then it's going to save them into a NPZ file. So that way, you have your whole data set already processed, and you don't have to process it in the training loop, which saves a lot of time. And so then, just run that. Let's let it process. Then after that, you just load the model and tokenizer. And then the rest are just, um, like these two are just setup stuff. So we can load the model, we can load this setup. This is the quantization config. You don't have to do anything but run it. Same for this, you just have to run it. Run it. This sets up the data loaders and schedules. This puts it all on the right devices, sets it to the right D types by using accelerator.prepare. Okay, and then this step is just setting up, um, just doing the math for how many steps to take, and it's just logging it. So we can just run that. Now this step, um, this is a validation. So this, is, so this way um, you could run this, so you go through your validation set, and you can get a validation loss before training, and then you can train, and then run validation again to see how much your validation loss improved. Because when you're training, the model never actually sees the validation set. It only sees the train set. So the validation loss is a very good um, measure of if you're actually learning the target distribution or not. 
So let's see what's going on here. Okay, it's loading the model. That should only take a minute or so. Okay, that's done. Just gonna run through all these. Okay, so that's done. Now we can run validation. All right, validation loss is 2.687 over 77 samples and 10 batches. Okay, perfect. Now we can run training. Let's train this. Okay, it looks like it's gonna train for 780 steps and it's gonna take about three minutes. So I'll go ahead and pause this while it trains. Okay, so model training is finished. And to be honest, um, that was like 20 epochs, so that was probably way too much. So um, I would recommend probably to do fewer. And then so we can run the validation again to see what happened. Okay, so it's at 2.39. So definitely lower than 2.68, but I'm sure with some hyperparameter tuning, you probably get that a lot better. Okay, but just for the sake of the video, we'll go ahead and move on to the next step. So I'll just clear off its save, close. And so after the semantic, what you want to train is the core stage. So basically the same stuff as the last time. Run your inputs. Here's all the training arguments. Now um, model type is coarse. Don't change that. And then check my path to your model. Rest is pretty much the same, but you just um, change it for your data set. So I'll go ahead and run that. Go ahead and define these functions. Now, um, the set of data set that's commented out because we already did that on the train semantics, so we don't actually have to run that. We can just skip it. So we can go straight to loading the model and then all these cells defining necessary functions and setting stuff up. Basically, more or less the same as the other notebook. Okay, so we're back at the validation step. Let's see what that turns out. Oh, once this is done loading. Where is it at? Okay, it's still loading the model. I shall take a couple more seconds. Perfect. Okay, now we can go down here and see what the validation is. Okay, 2.62, not bad. Now we can run training. Looks like it's freezing a little. Okay, so I'll pause this while it trains and see you in 120 steps. Okay, model is done training. Now we can run the validation step. 2.268. That's definitely lower than 2.62. Okay, perfect. So now we can clear outputs, save, and continue to the next file. And I forgot to import JSON. So I'll add that now. So then after the course model, we go up to the fine model. So we'll just repeat the process, run imports. And then set up the training arguments. Model type this time is fine. And then just set your checkpoint path to wherever you have that. And rest is pretty much the same. I'm just going to run that. Define the functions. Set up data site. We can skip that again. So basically the same as the other stuff, load model, and then the setup cells. So we'll run through these. And this is where the validation starts. So here's validation number one. I'll have to wait for this model to load. It usually takes about 30 something seconds.
Perfect. Okay. So we'll run the validation. That's a pretty crazy validation loss. Okay, so now we can run the training. Okay, I will see you in 205 steps. Okay, model's done training. Now we will go to the validation step, see if it learns some stuff. Okay, three is a lot better than 30. So now we'll go on to the next step, which is testing the models. Okay, so for testing the models, we want to just go to this notebook called test models. And pretty simple, just run this. Um, define your semantic path, your course path, and your find path. And then you just set it up into this preload, preload models. And you just run that, and it will find all your custom models and load them up. And you can start. I'm generating with it. So it'll take a couple of seconds. The part that takes the longest is the course modeling stage, which is what you see here in this step. See what it sounds like. I am Joe Biden, and this is the fine tuned semantic course and fine model. Well, what better the original? Well, what? What's got to be? Yeah, it seems to still like to just trail off at the end and say stuff that wasn't even the text prompt, but um, that only happens sometimes, so um, I'm sure we'll figure out ways around it, but. Yeah, that's what we have so far. Thanks for watching.